In summary, elected members, I believe the time has arrived to accept the fact that our Mayor, after six years in the position, displays a pattern of behaviour that does not meet with the standards of leadership, legislative knowledge or functional ability required to satisfactorily undertake and carry out the duties required of this important role. Additionally, the key governance roles of office, including his ability to efficiently, efficiently inform, advise and rule on matters of important council and community business are decidedly lacking. His inability to carry his office are further highlighted in the fact that this council remains devoid of cohesive teamwork, effective decision making, openness, honesty and transparency are so criticised in the community and the media. When these things happen, you must always look to the top for answers. In this case, our Mayor has failed to model good conduct or good governance, behaviour or ethics. I regret that I'm the councillor who has placed this motion before you this evening. I assure you I don't find this position I am in comfortable nor in any way satisfying.
Um, we have all got the things that we're good at and things that we're not good at. We're all humans. The mayor was elected by the people of Victor Harbour for his term, um, and I think that um, that you know, for us to ask him to stand down, it's not up to us to ask him to stand down. I think two wrongs don't make a right, and I do think that the way that um, um, Councillor Marshall was sacked from being Deputy Mayor, which happened while I was overseas, and so that first um, motion that occurred, I didn't have any, any part to play in, in that. Um, I don't think that that was done right, and if I had been here, um, I hope that I would have been able to say, no, we need to have a code of conduct against him first. But nevertheless, that went on. To do it again does not make what happened right. This is not a tit for tat. We need to remove ourselves from things that have happened in the past and we need to look at what is happening here. I have never been so embarrassed to be a member of council because I think that the display here and what people are saying and the accusations that are flying back and forth are just unprofessional to a T. Um, I will not be supporting this motion. Um, in fact, afterwards, when the mayor will need some assistance, because I think this has just been an absolute, um, you know, witch hunt and bullying to the team, um, I will be offering him. I'll be offering him assistance. So I'll be Does anybody else wish to speak for or against that motion? Thank you. Uh, yes, look, I'm, I'm going to speak against it. One is because we can't. Um, do this. Uh, I, like everybody else, um, was embarrassed, but we did get a, an apology. I, I look at the uh, His Worship's actions, and yes, I would say it's a spur of the moment. Um, and do we have, again, the right to do what we're doing and, and ask him to pay that price? When a couple of weeks ago we had uh, a very serious um, code of conduct against two of our elected members, when that was raised in the chamber, the rest of the elected members sat and listened to that and didn't take further action. So what's happening tonight when we're actually asking our Mayor to resign? Should we have asked the other two elected members to resign as well? Thank you, Chair. Um, it, it is a very unfortunate place that we have all found ourselves in, in this chamber, um, where we have members that believe that two wrongs make a right. I, like um, many in here, out in the community, um, people of Victor Harbour, and very disappointed in what happened on the 10th of May. It, it was not the mayor's finest moment. However, I don't, I won't be supporting this motion. I will support a code of conduct to take place to ensure that if the mayor has a case to answer for, that he answers for it. But we'll do this the proper way. And hopefully that is how we will do things in the future. We've done things the wrong way in the past. But that doesn't mean we should keep doing it. I'd like to close the motion. Uh, I'd like to actually uh, reply to Councillor uh, Council Schofield that um, uh, everything was done according to what the Ombudsman required. There was more, no more you could do. Okay? And it wasn't uh, anything. Well, I can't say much because the Ombudsman is all powerful and I would never go against what he's had to say. So let's leave it at that, but I'd love to, um, I'd love to um, argue the point. Just in completing my motion tonight, doesn't seem, doesn't just stem from one disgraceful incident by our Mayor at the recent Victor Harbour Council Action Group public meeting on the 10th of May at McCracken, but rather it captures an overall accumulation of substandard behaviour over time that has contributed this Council Green Morton to disrepute in the eyes of the community. Our community who elected and generously pay Mayor Phil to serve them. 
our community that has high expectation and that the Mayor is competent and capable of keeping abreast with the current knowledge and statutory requirements attached to this important leadership position. The catalyst for this motion of no confidence was the Mayor's spectacularly rude and unprofessional display of petulant and, in my opinion, offensive behaviour at the inaugural meeting of the Victor Harbour Community Action Group. If there ever was to be an occasion for us to be in the public spotlight and to represent our council in the best way possible, this was it. 130 community members were present with the primary aim of formalising their association and to use the forum to share comments, good and bad. Councillor Charles, will you please bring this to a close? I've got five minutes to bring it to no, a close. No, you've, you've already spoken on it for five you minutes. You've five and then another five? Oh. Well, I, I pray uh, and, and I ask the, the members for me to complete this um, because it, it is essential that I do. I don't believe this motion is going to get up, but um, it's essential that these words are spoken, I think, and I think we need to hear them. All right? About the performance, uh, good and bad, about the performance of council. In my opinion, our best course of action as elected members was to listen to the comments raised, to accept constructive criticism, and to do as I did and remain behind after the meeting to discuss items of concern and interest with community members. Who could have prepared us for the mayor's behaviour through, though, when he stood during the meeting, commenced to wave his arms about and called out in a loud voice, point of order, this is rubbish, I'm not listening. Then stormed out of the meeting, accompanied the loud applause from the audience of, of go home, good riddance, get out of here. After the meeting, I was approached by a lady who said of our mayor, I recognise that in Victor Harbour, the less you know about anything, the better qualified you are to be mayor. A second comment from a local businessman and my shop the next day who commented on the behaviour of the mayor and a couple of the elected members who spoke at the meeting and who chose to concentrate on their own self-importance rather than the hearing the messages that the community was trying to convey to them, he said that. The council must be the only asylum in Australia where the inmates are in charge. <laughs> Since that public meeting, there have been two editions of the local Times newspaper into which an explanation, retraction or an apology could have been inserted, but it was not. Tonight marks 13 days since that public meeting, 13 days which have been used to construct and send an appropriate open email to all members of the City of Victor Harbour, this includes staff, who also directly suffer further erosion of public esteem and confidence because of that event. No emails whatsoever, only deafening silence. Only a little bit to go. When in error, on all occasions, a timely apology, an admission of guilt, along with a genuine effort to put any wrong right, goes a long way to maintaining quality communication and mutual respect. Respect is hard earned and so easily given up. There is constant pressure on all employees, elected members of council and any council, and that is any council, to produce a 100% success rate in all of its decisions, actions and public statements. The public expect high standards, otherwise criticism is levelled from all fronts. We know council can, council can be, and often is, a whipping boy in the street, over the fence. Council's rights and wrongs are discussed almost as often as the weather. Certainly the public's condemnation is, on occasion, well deserved. We know that it is not humanly possible to attain perfection, but the public expect our very best efforts. His shameful behaviour in the Kraken Residence meeting amounts to a breach of the elected member's code of conduct, specifically part 2.4, which requires that at all times elected members shall show respect for others if making comments publicly. This the Mayor most certainly did not do at McCracken and therefore a very belated public apology is not sufficient to redress his disgraceful behaviour. I urge you elected members to take in the bigger picture here and consider the overall evidence I presented to you tonight to support this motion before you. Once again, I regret that I'm the councillor who has replaced this motion before you this evening. I assure you I do not find this position I am uncomfortable nor in any way satisfying, but further, I do not shirk my responsibility to lodge this motion on behalf of those who would but cannot, the residents, the ratepayers and the electors.